you kill one, the other dies. And that's that's true of whether you pause Facebook or you pause Google. But if you increase it, the other one also increases. So those trends that I'm talking about can be identified inside of this area here. But like, is this something that someone <laughs> could do uh, if they didn't have North Beam? Or is this something that really North Beam allows you to do uniquely? Mm -hmm. So identifying those overlaps and not necessarily looking at just the first overview page where I say, well, Google looks better than Facebook scale Google. The understanding the why is going to be very good because again, this is just the click paths. So let's go into the first more specific thing, mm -hmm. um, which is uh, you wanting to to talk about or show off uh, identifying the top conversion paths between non-brand prospecting channels and mm -hmm. Google brand. Mm -hmm. How do how do people go about doing this? Uh, and you know, if this is a hot tip. What, yeah. what are what are the ways that they can they can do this to optimize that paid search? Absolutely. So I guess I'll, what I'll do is I'll share an example of a client and why there is some some fallacies built in uh, to not necessarily fallacies, but I would say uh, some common misconceptions sometimes mm -hmm. that people assume when they look at kind of the overview page because they don't quite understand why. Can you see this? Okay. Is this sh screen sharing? Yeah. Fine? Yep, okay. Yeah. Yep. So this here is is a current client of ours. And what you'll see here is that the cost of acquiring a new customer is very inexpensive at you know 30 compared to let's say Facebook ads. And the media efficiency ratio is is you know about 100 percent higher um, or 100 percentile points higher than Facebook ads. However, you see most of the spend going to Facebook and less going to Google. Now a person here would say, aha, well, just scale Google. Makes sense. It's, it performs better, cheaper CACs, you know. We have a very good amount of transactions, you know, 3,000 compared to eight of the 18. Okay, so why don't we push harder here? And that's because these two are working so closely together that Facebook is a better prospecting channel for this client. It, it's not always, it's not always, it's just for, it is for this client. So when we're looking at the conversion pass, what we're identifying is, well, why does Google look good? But Google always rises and falls. Well, not always, but very closely aligned with Facebook. It always rises and falls with the, the effectiveness of Facebook. And how are those two helping each other? You kill one, the other dies. And that's that's true of whether you pause Facebook or you pause Google. But if you increase it, the other one also increases. So those trends that I'm talking about can be identified inside of this area here, which is the, it's called customer pass, but this is basically the conversion path and what a customer has taken. So one of the things that I, I look at very frequently is the click paths, because it's usually going to be indicative of the view paths as well. If you're getting views that ultimately click or you're getting clicks that, that ultimately click, tracking those two trends as to cross-channel attribution is going to help you identify, aha, the reason why Google and a specific channel instead of Google looks good is not actually because of Google. It's also because of another another. Uh, channel, but the but the overlap, the way that auto targeting works in Performance Max, for example, is simply going to scoop up conversions wherever it can. So we leverage that. One of the ways that I use this here is if you take a campaign by label and you say, "Well, we'll track all of these channels here except for Google Ads, which is our brand campaign," and then matched the next path, which is only Google ads and not the other channels. So you're saying the 34 of the 35 first click, and then what ended up happening to brand, you can identify why a brand or why a remarketing element um, instead of Google is working well. So this is out of 641,000 in the last 60 days of revenue. So 13,500 sales, fairly consistent. And we can see sorting descending by by transactions. This, this PMAX, uh, so late upgraded campaign and the brand are a lot of times the last click in the channel. Mm -hmm. Now, that's 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 okay. But what is happening first? Well, we can ignore the directs because we do have a lot of return traffic that do get remarketed. That is going to say, okay, so this is not necessarily having a really good result on overall revenue, which is what that overview page were, was, but potentially earning some attribution by remarketing your existing customers. That's the first thing that we have to understand. That means it's not necessarily scalable because we're just going to start to remarket our existing users harder. If you have sure. a lot of direct that's coming back, we have to look at the splits next. But 
this here is a really, really good um, indication. A advantage plus shopping and then a Pmax click. And those paths are are 40 people took that path and 40 people converted. That's 100% conversion rate between those two paths. And there's, there's thousands of paths here that we can analyze, but we're looking for the top. Mm -hmm. So then we look at, okay, what other commonalities? We see advantage plus shopping. We see another Pmax. We see advantage plus shopping. Then we see a brand. We see another advantage plus shopping. We see another brand. So we're starting to track trends. Advantage plus shopping in Facebook is helping Google. And Google is also helping Advantage Plus shopping. The reason why is because those are two campaigns that are using auto-targeting designed to repeat an impression and repeat a click in order to get a conversion together. So if you stop showing up or remarketing single-click Advantage Plus shopping campaigns, Advantage Plus starts to hurt. If you stop feeding performance max brand new users from a different channel that it can scoop up the that easy 10 cent 20 cents remarketing clicks if you stop advantage plus shopping google's going to hurt because we're we're removing that feeding engine mm -hmm. so identifying those overlaps and not necessarily looking at just the first overview page where i say well google looks better than facebook scale google the understanding the why is going to be very good because again this is just the click paths and you know this better than anybody people that see things on facebook four or five or six times the first thing that they do if they're ready to buy if they didn't click is open up a new tab google that brand name that's that's what people do so identifying even just singular click points can also be very very important and the singular click points here for example would be if i'm looking at just overall conversion paths just out of nowhere it looks like google here has more revenue and more transactions than facebook but this is the click pass. It's not the view to converge path. I would say probably one third of the people that are in this first shell here at Pmax probably got an impression from Facebook. Mm -hmm. So, and, and Norpin will actually tell you that too. We can we can see when you change the click and views. Watch this. So we have a fifty dollar CAC on Facebook and a thirty dollar CAC on Google. Change it to click and views. And you'll see here that it's 4431. So Facebook got a little better. Google got a little worse. This is not a glitch. I'm interrupting the video you're watching because I want to remind you that we provide done-for-you Google Ads services. We're the number one ranked Google Ads agency on the planet with almost $100 million in ad spend under management. If you're an entrepreneur, business owner, C-level exec, director of marketing, and you're managing your own Google Ads, I think that's a massively inefficient use of your time. As a matter of fact, in my experience, within 90 days, we're able to optimize existing campaigns to a point to where we're paying for ourselves. We move from being a cost center to a profit center, and I want to put my time and my money where my mouth is. If you're spending $10,000 dollars a month or more in Google ads, I want to offer you a free, no obligation action plan. A high level member of my team, one of our strategists will look at your account, open the hood and do it full diagnostic and explain everything that we would recommend that you change in order to optimize your campaigns. You can take that, do it yourself. You can hand it to an internal member of your team or in an ideal world, you can hire us. I'd love the opportunity to, to earn your business. Please go to sol8.com. That's sol, the number eight.com. Request your free action plan. Until then, back to your regularly scheduled program. Mm -hmm. so, the, so they start to more, be more closely aligned. And that's when you're seeing that the top line is looking very, very good. We have $31 cost per acquired new customer, and we spent 350 k on it last week. That's a very good new customer growth. But identifying how they work together, not how they're separate, um, using those top conversion paths, you can see, aha, the overlap here is is quite often, quite often together, only on only on clicks. Yeah, I mean, it's um, I think th it starts to bring clarity to, you know, instead of looking at it, no, oh, we know they depend on each other. We're not sure how, which is big. Mm -hmm. I think uh, is this something that with, I mean, obviously this is a North Beam webinar, and not trying to hide it, but like, is this something that someone <laughs> could do? Uh, if they didn't have North Beam, or is this something that really North Beam allows you to do uniquely, um, you know, versus, I mean, obviously you could probably try to, you could get some of this in, in, in GA4, um, if we can find it, <laughs> if we can find it or yeah. we, or we trust it. Yeah. If it's not um, direct and unattributed, you know, the 30% that's left. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, so, so the answer is kind of, but this is one of yeah. those things where a, a tool really helps you to start to clarify some of those conversion paths. 
it's it's a validation of your suspicion is what I've been calling it. Um, I've had so many times where I've run a performance max campaign and the client's been running a a, a Facebook campaign where all of a sudden I see performance max, nothing changed. And all of a sudden, you know, spend stayed about the same. Um, conversion rates stayed about the same, but all of a sudden my CPC increases, my conversions decrease by 20, 25% for no reason. Mm -hmm. And then when we meet with the client, we say, and I, I started saying, okay, what were you doing on Facebook? Oh yeah. We paused these five campaigns. They didn't look good. Aha. So started to just overall experience by identify what's going on in Google, identify what's going on in Facebook. And then finding that when I started to crank up PMAX, my performance max didn't actually take much more attribution, but then Facebook sure. started to look better. Sure. So when we use Norpium, we said, this is it. This is what I figured is, is, is mm -hmm. overlapping. And, and then you always get the client where Facebook's like, I made 10 sales. And Google's like, well, I made 10 sales. The client's like, I only made 10 sales. Like, what are you guys talking about? <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> so right. yeah, those, those two rise and fall together. And when you see things happening in Google, when you're using automatic targeting like PMAX, when things just go haywire, look elsewhere. So let's get into this, John, which is um, where where do we stand now in terms of attribution generally in, and, and really in reference to what it has to do with Google Ads? So, you know, we kind of went through the iOS 14 era of that being a, a, 